I think Sister Imidas, now the current style of governance in every state is, rather, is every state governor waiting cap in hand for Abuja allocation month on month to run the affairs of their state. Now, a few state governors have decided to look in what to generate revenue, but is this enough? Now, going back again to Governor Obaseki's comment, what we relied on as an economy, that is crude oil, currently selling at 60 to $70, according to him, is a mirage. And as major oil companies like Chevron are investing in alternative fuel and Shell is pulling out of Nigeria, he alleged that the federal government printed and, um, an additional 50 to 60 billion naira as a top up for state governors to share, which they have refuted. Now, by the end of the year, the total amount we have borrowed as a nation will be in excess of 15 to 16 trillion. And of course, he concluded saying, his biggest worry is us waking up one day to be like Argentina, where Naira will be 1,000, 2,000 and on. So you can search for that video online. If you haven't watched it, you know, get the full video online. It's online so you can catch it. So our focus tonight is as we are approaching 2023, all right, is it enough? Or I mean, it's not enough to just say, I want to fight corruption, like I said before, or I want to do this, I want to build, no. As we have heard, you know, we heard that in 2015, and trust me, see where we are today. What are the right questions about the economic growth and progress we should be asking, you know, whoever is planning to run for elected office? And what should our economy roadmap or our economic roadmap, rather, look like, you know, for us to see that this person is truly serious about building the economy, right? Harnessing our potential, we are so blessed in this country, but we're not even scratching the surface of what we can achieve as an, as an economy. All right, so please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You know, Mondays are our days where we look towards 2023. We started this, you know, a month, uh, I mean, a while back, and we've been consistent every Monday. We talk about things that will push us towards 2023. And how we can open the minds of people to see what you should be looking out for when it comes to candidacy. Because I saw some video that, what's his name, Senator Dino Malai posted about a young boy talking about, oh, PDP, PDP, PDP. They already started playing this card. We are not voting parties. We are voting individuals. We are voting visions. We are voting blueprints. You understand? And for me today, when I looked at this Obaseki's video, when it went viral, my sister sent it to me over the weekend and all of that, I said, okay. What angle are we going to be looking at? Because the truth is that many a times, I think most times when it comes to politics, we forget the biggest factor, which is economic, yeah. right? What is the economic value that this person is bringing to, to us as a nation? We forget all the time to look at the economy. Mm -hmm. And that is what has brought us to where we are today because we were so hell-bent and focused on corruption. I will fight mm -hmm. corruption. I'll fight, so we got blinded, Bye. you know? And now look at how everybody is actually struggling you know, this at this period. So if you were to look at it, um, Jennifer, what would be the economic roadmap that you are looking out for? You know, if somebody says, okay, this is what I will do X, Y, Z for the economy that will make you think the person is serious, what would that be for you? Um, personally, for me, I think um, it's to reduce or probably increase the standard of living in Nigeria mm -hmm. because um, every day things are becoming more expensive. Diesel, petrol, and all of that, they are becoming really expensive mm. and people cannot afford the normal things that they can afford on a daily basis. Mm. Even when you want to use transport, people say, oh, use a bus, use Kekena Pep, use this. They are becoming expensive. Mm. Now, um, the last time there was almost, um, we almost had a um, full scarcity. Now, guess what? Transport has already increased. Now, if there's full scarcity, it's going to double or it's going to triple. Now, what does that mean for the average Nigerian? Mm. It means that you're going to spend way more than you're earning. So at the end of the month, you have nothing to fall back on. You have nothing nothing to fall back on. You go to the market, everything is expensive. You're trying to buy clothes. You're yeah, trying so to you buy are even looking at your personal stuff. economy. Your personal it, it, economy. What is the plan? The, that's, <laughs> I need to know what the plan yeah. is for the people, for the mm. general public. Yeah. Let's start looking at that. It's not by sharing rice mm. because I saw in the news that Tinebu shared rice in Kano. Today. Okay. Now, How about you quickly? So I'm bringing part of our what guests. I was going to ask uh, Mr. Tunji as well, but um, for me, I would look out for an individual who will give us policies that are 
business friendly, mm -hmm. that will create wealth in Nigeria mm -hmm. in such a way that the economy will grow. Mm -hmm. And it won't be so difficult for SMEs to, you know, to carry out to carry out their businesses in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because we have one we have policies that are so so they are more like draconian. Mm -hmm. They are difficult <laughs> to well, funny know. enough, our policies look good on paper. It's implementation. That's the it's point. Implementation. They, still, they, they, still come back, they still come behind and do yeah. other things. So can, you see how, yes. can you see how the tech startups have been suffering ah, for a we very we long time? We discussed that on Friday. Yeah. I talked about it on it's, Friday. No, no, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I see this every day and I'm like, what is the future for us? Hmm. What's going to happen in the next two, three years? Absolutely. All right, so let me bring in our guest. Sundi Andrew is the founder of Awaba. Nigeria's first technology access provider to micro pensions. He is a financial literacy advocate, macroeconomic thought leader, and an award winning media personality. Tunji is very committed to the push for financial inclusion in Nigeria. And he's joined us live via Zoom. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tunji, for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. Thank we're you so honored to be, we're so honored to be having hosting you this evening. All right, so Tunji, um, I mean, when you watched um, Obaseki's video and his allegations, of course, CBN has come out to refute that, to say they don't know anything about that. What, well, first of all, what came to your mind? Because for me, that was really alarming. It's like it raised all the red flags about what our economy would look like, you know, by the end of this government. Like, I'm really scared right now, you know, because we're borrowing, we're borrowing with no hope of paying back. I mean, those were really strong, um, strong um, allegations. Com allegations and comments that came out from the governor's mouth. But what came to your mind? What was your initial thought on that? Um, so what the governor said, um, I, I was, well, actually I was a bit shocked by it because um, it's not something you can... Um, it's not something you can put a lot of fact behind because while of course it is fact that most governments do it and i'm not talking about the nigerian government alone i'm talking about governments across the world so when there is a shortage in terms of money supply at some particular times the central bank will naturally print money to be able to meet um, ongoing car, um, domestic expenses so it's 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 not an unusual thing to happen in economic management. It's not unusual. But for him to say it, um, and he is not somebody that is illiterate to monetary policy. Mm -hmm. um, he, if you know his background, he was an investment banker. Uh, so he knows why he said this, and he knows what the ramifications of what he just said are. So I feel there's a deeper uh, message. Um, and a deeper message is that we have shortages. And um, that, of course, is something that we, a few people have known for a while. If you look at Nigeria's revenue um, collection over the last seven years, you would realize that in, at, in entire dollar terms, it has reduced steadily over the last seven years. Mm. Every year, it has been a less amount. Um, so... It, it, it is clear that Nigeria has financial issues, revenue issues, um, but I'm still trying to understand what um, Governor Basaki's angle was in putting this out because it's not a new thing, um, at least to people who are financially in the know. Uh, but what was he trying to pass on as a message to the entire general public is what I'm really trying to just put my finger on. So for me, I think, you know, if you, if you ask me, the message he passed across to me was, you know, you need to wake up and smell the coffee and smell that these people do not have a clue of what, what it means to run an economy, right? That's what the, that was the message he, he spoke to me. And for me, it was really worrisome because tomorrow we can truly just wake up and we become like an Argentina or, you know, because... Hey, Venezuela. <laughs> oh, yeah, because when we had Patutomi, he was saying that about mm -hmm. Venezuela. Yes. You know, so that was what um, that message, you know. But is where we are going to right now, currently with the economy, do you see this even happening? What he said about us having like a thousand, two thousand naira to a dollar. All right, so you want to do something. Um, and this is something I, I, I suggest but it should do so to make it to you take google 
Google Venezuela headlines from 2010 or 20. Just Google Venezuela headlines from 2012. Now take that particular headline, copy it out, and put it into your um, Word document, and then remove every single place you see Venezuela and replace it with Nigeria. And you would realize that what Venezuela did about maybe say 10 years ago is what we are doing right now. Um, from subsidies to government interventions to uh, populist, um, populist um, uh, um, decisions really. Things that make people like the government as against what is really important to the people. You would realize that Venezuela was really on that path and they are now a lot worse off for it. Nigeria is at the place where we are heading there very quickly, but nobody, at least a lot of, a few people are sounding their alarm, alarm bells, but we are going there steadily. Hmm. Now, here's the problem. Not very many Nigerians can handle the fixes that require for Nigeria to be a top economy. Hmm. I'll say that again. Not very many people can handle the fixes that are required for Nigeria to be a top economy. Now, what are the fixes that we need? First of all, we need to eliminate every single consumption subsidy that exists in Nigeria. Hmm. And when I mean that, that means your petrol might go up to 300 naira per liter. The amount you're paying for your electricity might double or even triple because the government is, I, from what I, I understand, the government is paying two subsidies on the electricity you are, you are receiving. So one subsidy on gas, the other subsidy on electricity. So you possibly be paying double or triple what you're paying now for electricity. Mm -hmm. Also, it means that you'll be paying for infrastructure. So you'll be paying for roads. You will be paying a bit extra for a um, um, hospital. You'll be paying a lot, lot extra for education. Are we ready for that? I'm not entirely sure Nigerians are. Um, what Nigerians just want is... Um, to be able to go to the market with the money they have right now and buy everything possible in the market so that they can say the government is good, doing good. So the problem isn't also the government alone. The government, of course, is playing to the whims and caprices of the people because mm -hmm. they want re-election. But the truth is that the people themselves do not know what it requires to move a country forward. Oh. Argentina that you spoke of, the reason why they got there was because the government was trying to please the people. So when there was scarcity, they would open the storehouses, give everybody bread, you know, cut prices, force people to bring down prices. We are doing the same thing in Nigeria. Hmm. Will we get to Venezuela? Very possible. Wow. Indeed, that's very that's, scary. Um, that's quite scary. <laughs> You've talked about the, fi the, the fixes, um, petrol going up, electricity, road, education, all of these going up. And also, we also had the time the government um, had um, the NPAR project, which they were giving uh, the youth um, money. Has this, do you think that this has helped the youth of Nigeria in any form or in any way to actually, you know, um, what was the economic impact it has had on the youth, basically? So, so I have a problem with those kind of um, empowerment programs. Mm. But of recent, I've started to think to myself again, 10,000 Naira to somebody selling pure water is huge money. Very, very big money. Will it help him or her to be able to expand their pure water business, maybe even have a stall somewhere? Yes, possibly. But here is the thing. Such intervention programs cannot, I repeat, cannot take a country out of poverty. Never. Why do people get poor? And the reason is simple. Issues around education, issues around healthcare. I mean, those are the two primary things. And they are all humanitarian. So... Uh, if I'm educated, the chances of me getting rich are higher. It's not a total factor that I'll be rich if I'm educated, but it, it just gives me better chance to, be, uh, to, to get better with my finances. Also, a lot of Nigerians pay out of pocket for, um, what do you call it, healthcare. It does happen that just one sickness can make the average Nigerian 
So my problem is, if you really want to fix Nigeria long term, you have to think about more structures. You have to think about fixing education, to think about fixing healthcare. You have to think about fixing infrastructure. These things are expensive. Will Nigerians be ready to pay for it? I don't know. So I, I think really we really need to look at the models that have worked out in the world and see fix it with Nigeria and understand what it takes for us to have a, a country and a government and then put less pressure on politicians mm -hmm. um, so into office and then his family members bring all the lists. His people around send their own list. His friends from secondary school now remember his number. Um, his ex-girlfriends and, you know, everybody really remembers them. And there's so much pressure on the person to alleviate so many people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the person ends up not doing what they should do because they're not focused and sometimes possibly even diverting funds. Mm -hmm. No government is going, no country is going to move forward with that kind of thinking. I know it is high, <laughs> high for me for my high horse to speak this, but I'm just telling you what needs to be done. If we can't do this, yeah, then there has to be realizing that we have to take the good with the bad as we go. So we might have some bad uh, leaders, we might have some good leaders, and as they say, the right hand washes the left. Maybe in our children's time, Nigeria will be good. Huh. But <laughs> if we want to fix it quickly, I've told you what to do. Okay. Um, I think, well, personally, when it comes to Nigeria, I don't think there is any quick fix. And then you're also saying that we shouldn't put um, pressure on the government. And if there's anything I believe is before you go into a seat of power, I think you already understand the integrities you already understand what is expected of you and you came up with different mandates and the things that you want to do for the economy the things you want to do for the country and then once you're put in that seat you cannot deliver now when we come from oh too much pressure on the governors or the government i think is kind of like making an excuse for them and there is always a roadmap. I understand you. Trust me. I understand what you're saying. There, there, there's pressure from everywhere. There's, there's pressure from the Godfather where you have to um, serve the Godfather. You have to listen to him first before you even listen to your own people that you are serving. But the truth is, most of the time, the government doesn't have a roadmap. Hmm. There is no roadmap to achieving a lot of these things. Now, I saw, the, um, I saw the financial budget for 2021. Honestly, it was ridiculous. Now, most of the projects that they said they were going to work on, most of them could not even back it up. We saw a lot of um, projects for schools, for these schools, for that. Okay, and then they were asking the governors, which particular area, which economy, which, um, sorry, which community are you going to build this project? And guess what? Silence. So, so you basically, are talking about integrity. Yeah. If you're not going to put, if we're not going to check those things, then they can't deliver. I know I understand. See, one of the reasons why I think I understand where you're coming from is when um, Nigerians say, oh, we want to end corruption, we want to end this. But the truth is, we're not ready for we're it. We're not ready for it. Nigerians are actually not ready to end corruption <laughs> because guess what? A lot of people we benefit are from it. benefiting from corruption. You want to get something done, you have to call this person, you have to bribe this person. And guess what? If all those things end, it means that you have to wait in line for a thousand people who have gotten there before you for it to get to your turn. Okay, let Tunji come in. <laughs> so so um, there, there are many ways to look at this. First way to look at it is simply from the context of um, Governor Baseki that is speaking. Governor Baseki isn't a career politician. Mm -hmm. yes. He was one of the leaders of the Nigerian capital markets before he moved into politics. politics. So he's a seasoned economist. He's probably one of the people we look up to in the capital market. 
So I, I, I know he has pedigree. Is it possible that he went in there without a roadmap? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I know some of the things he's trying to do with job creation and empowerment and things like that. So I know some of the things he's trying to do. But we also have to be realistic about the, the governments we, we, we live in. So about um, maybe four years ago or five years ago, I was uh, part of the team that created, um, the sector uh, that created the sector strategy for statistics in Nigeria mm -hmm. um, under the National Bureau of Statistics. Mm -hmm. Now, you must understand what this uh, strategy me is. It's a strategy for how all the NDAs in Nigeria will harmonize and share data so that uh, they will have a central data bank where everybody can pull information from. If this sector strategy for statistics had worked, there would be no reason for BVN to exist on its own, NIN to exist on its own, um, National Driver's License to exist on its own, um, um, voters' registration to exist on its own, all biometric registrations, by the way, yeah. and all of them you had to register individually. Mm -hmm. Because if they could harmonize and come together, they will just need one person to collect it and everybody takes the information. But why has it not worked? Or why has it not, why have we not, the, the paper is there, sitting there, it's been there for six years or so, gathering dust. Why have we not used this paper? And like many other papers that a lot of brilliant people have put together, the policies. it's because every, to every small corner, there is a God. Mm. <laughs> there is somebody that must protect their huh. own turf. And, on t and you see, the problem really is it is in the p hands of you and I. If we, and if we demand in the right way for everything to be done as they should be done, then those people in those small corners will no longer have power. Absolutely. But because that person in that corner is my uncle's sister's brother's auntie, mm -hmm. you know, when everybody is condemning the person because I need the person to remain in power because I need one or two, you know, um, I'm not saying that I do it, but you okay. know. Um, <laughs> so th those are the problems. Okay, those Tunji. are the problems. All right, so I, I, need, I need you to come back to some things, but I want to take a break. When I return from that break or when we return from that break, we will now, I, I need you to come back to two things you mentioned. Stay with us, we'll be right back.